Oregon. First at 5 on 7 News. We now join our regularly scheduled program. Listen, I just made some coffee. Would you like some? Sure, thanks. So, how's the head? Oh, very big. Very sore, but I'll survive. Yeah, well, we'll find this guy. You know, I remembered something. What's that? Somebody definitely carried me here. And I wasn't afraid. It was like I said last night. I don't think the guy who hit me on the head is the one who brought me here, because the one who brought me here didn't want to hurt me. Come on, Tanji. Will you just, you gotta wise up. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's really unlikely that there were two weirdos on the beach last night. One good guy and one bad. I mean, I know how much you want to believe in the goodness of human nature, but if you don't mind, it's me saying, I mean, that's how you got yourself into this mess. Are you blaming me? Absolutely not. I mean, you know, you got to be real here. You're strolling on the beach, on a dark beach at midnight. You're, you, you, you talk to strange guys in bars. You're getting into cars with them. You got to realize there, there are people out there that'll try to hurt you, and one of them already did. You know, not everyone's a nice guy. Look, I'm really sorry. It's just been a late night, and uh, I don't like to see my friends getting hurt because they're careless. But you're too trusting. You gotta realize, you know, that sometimes the simple little things can, can just turn bad like that. I mean, a look coming from you or, or a word could be, could be uh, taken by, by some guy uh, as meaning something else, and that's all it takes for him to snap. And you know that there are guys out there that you know, they don't take no for an answer? Yeah, I know. Why is it too late? My plan has taken a turn. But why? You ask a lot of questions for someone who vowed never to ask any. But I'll answer your question, Jenna. Yes, Roger was intended to be an instrument of my return to power. Not because he's important, but because he's a selfish, ambitious yard dog who would sell his own mother for money and power. And I was going to dangle it in front of him and watch him hang himself with it while he helped me regain what was rightfully mine. I thought there was a certain elegance about that irony. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. There is. I would love to see that. Do you know, when I was married to Roger, he manipulated me. He used me to get a hold of Spalding. And I didn't want to believe it, you see, at the time, even though I'd heard that's exactly what he did with Alexander. He will do anything to get a hold of Spalding. Which is why his actions last night are so difficult to fathom. I was certain I had him right where I wanted him. And then suddenly he wanted out. He refused to cooperate. Mm, that is strange, isn't it? Yes. Which makes one wonder, what could be more important to Roger Thorpe than his lifelong dream? You were right. I got all caught up in it again. The hunt for Spalding. I mean, it's a sickness in me. And I lost sight of everything, everything in my life that is precious to me, just so I could keep my eye fixed on that prize. To the extent that I couldn't see what I was doing. You know what you were doing last night. You invited Ross and Blake out to dinner so you could get him out of his office. And then you invent this lie about losing your wallet so you can go and steal the file. You used Blake, and you used me. You are right. You were right last night, and I am sick about it. Oh, Roger, you know, I am not your father. I am not your conscience. I am your lover. And I've tried so hard to convince you that that's enough. That I'm enough. You are enough. I'm not. Because every time things are running smoothly, and I've managed to block out the past, and I think, oh, this time I can believe him. This time he really means it. You blindside me with something like this. What am I supposed to do? I can't. It's too hard for me. It drains me. Honestly, I don't know what to do about this anymore. Maybe we just have to face the facts. I am not enough for you. Oh, yeah, no, we have the eggs. eggs. Danny, Danny. What, what, what? Danny, you get the pancakes, I get the eggs. What, are you sure? Let's put them over there. Oh, okay, here, you get the, who gets the, get the hard? Coffee. All right, you get the hard. You didn't answer my question. What? Excuse me, my eggs About being free and clear. Uh, 
No, Davey, free and clear, like free and clear, like free and clear of a debt. That's what I meant. Oh, really? Is that what you meant? Because you said that you felt like you had a sack of cement around your neck. Am I not? Am I your sack of cement? Tell me the truth, Buzz. Tell me the truth. I mean, I have tried very hard not to let you feel like a prisoner anymore. Davey, what I said the other night, what I said the other night when our kids got married again, about like, you know, not appreciating what's right in front of you, I meant that stuff. Oh, come on, Deanie. Uh, could we get some coffee, please? She reads his mind. She knows what he's going to say before he says it because she's his soulmate. Am I really, Buzz? Am I really your soulmate? Hey, they don't give us luggage. They're not. We're not that close to the grand prize because you're not. I mean, these people are experts. They don't make mistakes. Look at you. Oh, there's nothing. It's not that bad. Oh, no, no. I, I'm sorry. I mean, it just looks like it hurts. We heard what oh, happened to you, and we are so sorry. Sit down. I'll get you some nice hot coffee and a piece of a mini strudel that you love so oh, much. Thank oh, you. it just looks thank like it hurts. So uh, more damage was safety razor. Oh. It's a big, no, today is the big day, right? What day? Oh, what are you talking about? You guys are in the semifinals for Soulmates, right? What, did you forget? I of course I didn't forget that day. I, I didn't know we were talking about that day. I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. Oh, wait, hey, listen, Dad, before I forget, uh, have you seen our wedding video? Oh, Frank, I, um, uh, I loaned it to Jenna. You've been looking all over for you. So how come you just took off like that? Look, I just want to talk to you, okay? Well, there's nobody else here, okay? There you go. What's this? Uh, some call it food. I figured you might be hungry. What's the matter? You never seen anyone hungry before? Uh, look. If those people you told me about are really after you, I know this detective, right? No police. I swear, if you go to them, I'll be on the first bus out of here. Which is a great way to get into even more trouble. Look, you seem like a nice guy. And I appreciate the food and all that, but I'm scared. You don't know what it's like to feel hunted. Do you feel the kind of scared that makes you want to run far away as fast as you can? Do you know that you're never going to get away because whatever happened is just going to keep chasing you? Something happened to me right here in this alley. I had a fight. A fight? Yeah, a bad one. Somebody died. Self-defense, but he died. Right here, as a matter of fact, in my arms. Now, he had the knife. He had already beaten up an old man and threatened to kill my girlfriend, but I still ran away because I figured, who's going to believe me? I mean, whoever believes the black guy with the record? That kind of scared? You've been in jail? Anyway, if I had it to do all over again, I'd just as soon stay put and try to set the record straight. That's all I'm saying you should do. Dylan Lewis is a great friend of mine, and he had everything that he owned on that truck. If you help me get it back for him, I promise you, I'll protect you with my life. You sound like you almost mean that. David, oh, I gotta talk. Okay. It's self-preservation time for me again, so I've got to be honest with you. I think the real reason you feel so bad is because you got caught. Well, that's just not true. Well, what would have happened if I hadn't come along? You would have taken that stupid file, never told me about it, and I would have gone on defending your honor and once again been the last one to know what a fool I was. <laughs> I can't help it. I still love you. God help me. But for what's left of my pride, tell me, was it really so much to ask to come first in your life? No, oh, not at all. How am I ever going to trust you? 
I walked around most of the night trying to come up with an answer to that question I knew you'd ask. This was the key to the kingdom. I will probably never come that close again. And I didn't read it. I didn't read one word of it. I swear to that on my life. I don't want, want to know what's in it. I don't know what's in it. And if getting spalling means losing you, I'm just going to have to figure out some way to live without it. Too many words. And I've heard them all before. Just look in my eyes, and then I'll know if you really mean it. Send Burton over there right away. Uh huh. Okay, hon. It's that time again. Mm. Yes, you have to. Right. Right. You really want to look like a all right. Look, we're going to wrap things up here now. All right. Will you do me a favor and check up on her every now and then? It's what I live for. You know, I really appreciate this, but I don't need a babysitter. And uh, see if you can talk some sense into her because she doesn't like to listen to me. Is there anything special you'd like me to do, Detective Cutter? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no more uh, midnight strolls on the beach. Anything else? Yeah, uh, don't open the door to anybody you don't know. You really think this guy's gonna come back? I want you to stop being careful. And I don't want to scare you, but sometimes these guys do come back. I'm only a phone call away if you need me, all right? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hmm. Tangie. Mm. Listen, I was wondering, you, you said that there have been a lot of people hanging around here lately, right? Has the mystery man been one of them? We had dinner. And, um... What? It wasn't him. How do you know, Tanji? I mean, you said yourself that you don't know anything about this guy. Are you telling me it hasn't even crossed your mind once no, that you could have No, it has to? crossed my mind. And it wasn't him. How do you know? I, I just get a feeling about him, and, and he's not the kind of guy who would do something like this. He has a limousine, right? Why would he take food? Somebody brought me here, and it wasn't him. What you're thinking, Buzz. She's just somebody that needs some help, and I'm, I'm just hoping that she'll let me. Well, David, you got a big heart, you know. Some wedding the other night, huh? Yeah, what I remember of it. Yeah, you and me put away a lot of champagne. <laughs> yeah, we did do some damage, didn't we? The video cam was going the whole time, huh? Yeah, sure was. The whole time. Yeah, got the whole thing on tape, man. Buzz Cooper's philosophy of life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. You know what I said on there? Yeah, in general, yeah. General? No, I mean, that's specifically, exactly what I said. Well, y yeah, I mean, you went on about love and commitment and... I mean, wh what are you saying, Buzz, that you don't even remember what you said? Yeah, I mean, I forget the details. Tell me, humor me. What'd I say? Uh, well... You, um... Well, hey, you said some nice things about love and Nadine. Oh, those. Pretty nice, Buzz. Yeah. I mean, you said some things that kind of made Nadine sound like Brussels sprouts. 
Brussels sprouts? Well, I mean, that, that wasn't your exact words, but... I mean, the way you talked about Nadine was like the way some people talk about Brussels sprouts. You know, that they look good on the vine, they're healthy for you, but you don't quite want them as a steady diet, you know? I mean, you, you said some sweet things too, Buzz. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you said how you love her and appreciate her and all that, but... I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that's... That's the way it came across. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. That was it. No, then you went on uh, about that other kind of love. You know, the once in a lifetime kind that drives you crazy, won't let you sleep, and you can't get it out of your system even if you really wanted to, which you don't really want to. I figured you was talking about Jenna that time. Thanks, David. Take a good look, Mr. Spaulding. What you see is someone who used to be Carnaby Street trash, with a Cockney accent that would make Eliza Doolittle look like somebody in the royal family. <laughs> but now I am in residence, very comfortably, I might add, thanks to you, in the Regency Hotel, where its minions refer to me as Miss Bradshaw, with quite a lot of respect. I also used to be the mistress of your childhood home, the manor up on the hill. So if you think that these things came to me by accident, you have sorely misjudged me. It took a long time to get rid of that accent, to talk the talk, walk the walk, learn all the rules. Not only did I learn them, but I made up a few of my own. <laughs> so don't think of dismissing me with a wave of your hand. Because I have played in your league, Mr. Spaulding, and I have done it extremely well. Bravo, Miss Bradshaw. Well done. Are you mocking me now? On the contrary, I'm congratulating you. It takes quite a bit of guts to open up oneself to a complete stranger. Oh, is that what I was doing? I learned quite a bit about you just now. No, you didn't. You learned exactly what I wanted you to learn. Mm, well done again. You're a much more interesting person than I gave you credit for. Why, thank you, kind sir. Does that mean that our arrangement is still intact? One question. What made you change your mind about helping me with Roger? Oh, I just thought it over. <laughs> Last night when I mentioned his name, you thought I was going to ask you to sleep with the devil himself. Sleeping with the man is totally out of the question. Mm. But following his movements is something I can do to help you. I'm nothing if not resourceful in that area. You will get exactly what you want, Mr. Spaulding. Mm. And so will I. Do you doubt me? No. Not anymore. Obviously, you can recognize a good thing when you see one. Unlike the woman who walked away from you, obviously didn't. Okay, so, you and the mystery man, you were on the beach, and he kissed you? No, no, he, he tried to, but mm, I didn't. Why not? Because, uh, look, there, we have a, a really special connection, but it's just, it's just not right. And I told him, I mean, he... Well, maybe not for you, but what about for him? He wanted more. Well, of course he wanted more. He's a man. <sighs> it sounds like you rejected him flat out, and, you know, they don't handle that very well. Well, I just don't think it could have been him. I mean, he wasn't angry. He was disappointed, but that's it. Oh, mass murderers start out a little disappointed, and then one day they wake up, they slice city. You know, look, I really believe in my heart that it wasn't him. I was stupid. I was ignorant. I became a crime statistic. 
I'm more upset about losing my book. Your really nice your book. Your book? You are crazy. I love you to pieces. I do, but you're out of your gorge, your book. I will take that as a compliment. Oh, listen. I should get home and, and check and see if I still have a husband. I'd have to look for a new one. <laughs> um, you gonna be okay here? Yeah, I will be. Okay. Okay. Just remember what the oh, Patrick yeah. said. Lock the windows, lock the doors, don't take candy from strangers, and don't answer the door unless it's you or him or James. Very good. What am I going to do with you? Would you do the ice pack every 20 minutes, please? So I will check on you. I'm so sorry. I got stuck at the office. I lost track of time. I'll make it up to you, I swear. And, and please give my apo... Why are you dressed like that? Well, these were my dinner clothes for last night. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't go home. I, I, that's what I came to tell you. I spent the night at Tangie's. Somebody attacked her. beach twice, and, and there's no sign of it anywhere. Well, look, I, I think it's out here, and, and I think if we just keep looking, we'll find it. All right, look, 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 look I'll make a deal with you. you. You need the rest, look. And I need to find this creep that did this to you. So if I promise to find the damn book, will you go home? Yes, yes, it's a Hey, Buzz. Nadine tells me you win today. You're in the finals, huh? Yeah. Thanks. Well, I think you're shoe in. Thank you. Um, Cal, you take care of yourself, okay? Yeah. Feel better. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to help. Honey, honey. It's as good as it's gonna get, you know what I mean? Come on, don't worry about your hair. The people at the studio are gonna take care of that. We're gonna be great today. I just know oh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So did you go do whatever it was you were gonna go do? Hey, you guys better get moving. You need to be at the studio in less than an hour. Yeah, he's right. Well, come on, come on, I'll catch up to you. Oh, come on, you look great, Buzz. You look great. I got, great. I got something great. I gotta do first. Bye. Do you know where he went? Well, he said something about having to go pick up that videotape. Okay, I know I'm being a neurotic mother, but you have to tell Mrs. Pappas that Marina needs the yellow tugboat or she'll be a crazy child. You think I don't know? I will tell her, yes. Okay, I mean, the bath will be nuts. Uh, I told you about the gala. I told you there's something else I'm forgetting, Stavros. Eleni, Marina will be fine, and if you don't leave soon, you're going to miss the whole show. Well, I have to wait for Frankie to finish his work here anyway, so don't... You know, I'm going to call her. Hey, Frank. Listen, man, I didn't want to say anything outside in front of Buzz and Nadine, you know, but... 
I think this is a legitimate lead on Dylan's hijacking. That girl was hitchhiking, Frank. She saw what happened, and now she thinks they're after her. David, you don't even know her name. No, but I just got a feeling that this could lead us somewhere, Frank. Look, I appreciate your eagerness and all that. I know everything seems like it's a lead right now, but you know what? We have no reason to believe that she's the key to anything. Yeah, I know. I know that, Frank. Listen. <laughs> I would be willing to bet that that girl is scared right now, Frank, and the only person she just might trust is me. I mean, look at it. The only thing standing between her and a lot of sleepless nights and bus stations and abandoned buildings and who knows what else is the small hope that I might be being straight with her, man, that I might even just help her. Okay, never mind. If you don't want to get involved, it's fine. No, no, hey, look, look, hold on here. I mean, look, we're in this together, right? All right, no solo acts. We're partners. Hey, did you say partner? Yes, I did. Listen, I got something to do right now, and we will definitely catch up later, okay? We'll talk about this. Okay. All right, can we get going, please? Um, Frankie, I just want to wait a few more minutes, okay? Okay, I'm Mom, ready. Mom, Dad's gonna, he's gonna meet us there. And here is the number, Stavros. Okay. I love you. Yes. Come on, cute girl. Come on, Mom. You're not going to wear that, are you? Let's tell your clothes. Look at my clothes. Surprised. Uh, didn't the concierge announce me? What are you doing here? I thought I'd come and get the tape of Frank and Eleni's wedding. I'll get it for you. I surprised you wanted to look at it. Didn't know you were that interested in my family. Particular members. You kept the silver. I kept the silver, yes. No, uh, well, I decided to keep it just in case I ran into a family that had an avid silver polisher just like you. Think of all the hours of fun you've really let yourself down for. <laughs> Did you look at this? Oh, yeah. The whole thing? Oh, glorious thing. What do you think? What I think? Oh, I thought a couple of different things. I thought that the whole Cooper clan are probably suffering from writer's cramp. All those invitations, too many wedding invitations, and I thought that all of you have become very good at giving speeches, especially you and... What else did I think? I also thought that maybe you would make it to the cover of Wedding Weekly. What are you staring at? I can't. You are incredible. You know that? They're fabulous. Always with wings. Mm -hmm. You look great, Mom. Oh, you look so beautiful. Is he here yet? Uh, not yet, but don't, well, don't worry yeah, about yeah, it. Really, don't, don't worry about it. Maybe you yeah. got lost or something. You know, but Frankie, he has been here half a dozen times. I know, Mom, oh, I know. Excuse me, folks. Uh, this is live television. <laughs> so why don't you all chit-chat after the show? <laughs> uh, Would you take your seats, please? Sure, maybe we'll chit chat over there. Chit chat, Thank you. Yes, nice after the you. show. <laughs> Hi, Nadine. Hi. Where's that wacky, wonderful husband of yours? This place is everybody. Where's your soulmate? Well, you have to be on the set now. He couldn't make it.
This will not keep me down, my little one. You will be loved and cared for. I promise you that. Who knows? You might end up even being a Spalding. Springfield Journal. It's a classified department, right? Yeah, uh, I want to place a, a personal ad. Yeah, it, uh, it reads, Father, I got your message. No, you know what? Scratch that. I want it to read, If hatred and revenge are the rules, then I can play too. Who do I want to build to? Never mind. Never mind, thanks. Cannons this fall on CBS. This has been Guiding Light. Jewelry provided by Treasures by Lauren. It's only minutes before showtime and the star contestant is nowhere to be found. Is Buzz about to blow his only chance to win a fortune? Tomorrow on Guiding Light and Chris, you've captured the heart of one man, but you've also captured the attention of another. Tomorrow on The Young and the Restless. Susan Anderson just did something totally new that made her feel like...